Protopian Tales um, is a, a series that I've envisaged where it's, it's basically hoping to be a, a collection of stories um, where technology is kind of present, but it, it's not the main core. And Protopia, just to describe that, if you're not familiar, is, is so you have a utopia, which is a sort of a, a dream future, if you like, or a dream, you know, a dream place. Although utopia actually in Latin actually it means no place. So it's something that will never happen, but it's uh -huh. a kind of a dream, isn't it? If you like, yeah. and then you have dystopia, obviously, which is um, when a utopia or, or plans can go astray or go quite wrong. And, um, you know, and a, a lot of people think we're living in one of those at the moment. That, you know, things can go quite, <laughs> quite astray. So that's a dystopia, quite negative. So protopia is where we kind of, nudge along and we sort of progress just a little bit at a time yeah so it's just like a little bit of utopia each each day if you like and just you know protopian ideas they're like positive positive ideas positive activity and for me technology can assist with this i think it really does assist with this you know so i i think for me protopia and technology really go together it becomes a superpower yeah. um the fact that you can you know literally see through walls or, or just summon up this information that isn't there, but we can bring it, you know? So it, it, it seems very protopian to me. So that was the idea that we would have these stories um, and they'd be based around the use of a, you know, immersive technology and promoting a unique form of, of storytelling. So it's kind of fo follows on from uh, space, time and streets in the sky in that way, I guess. But I think the difference with these is that we were looking to actually um base them on fiction yeah. yeah yeah that's brilliant and so the first i guess the first or the the one that we've mm. been working um in enabling you to work on is um go and describe that so i think you've been calling that the neon pack yeah um so for one that was a really good description of protopia so go on give us a give us a, a rationale for neon pack but also um yeah. yeah what's the what's the story you're trying to explore in that so the neon pack um is actually a, a short story i i wrote um i think last year or the year before and it, it's a very short story and it's basically about a group of friends in a future city it doesn't really say where the city is doesn't really say when but you kind of get a feel it's in a, a near future mm -hmm. and the story is about them having a night out really it's as simple as that it's about them having a night out but what is a normal night out to them has elements within it that for us now are very futuristic and very, you know, very protopian, I would say. Um, so, you know, the story as, it's, as it is at the moment um, involves, you know, various adventures and things that happen in, the, in this one evening. And what we've chosen to do for the Neon Pack um, for XR Stories is we've just taken three, three scenes, if you like, and we've created three scenes uh, in 360. Yeah. So yeah, the three the three sections because um, I watched them um, uh, the other day. We've got a, a lovely sort of psych tower um, nightclub scene. Mm -hmm. There's a scene uh, as a passenger in a car and sort of being taken through this sort of like dream dream world of augmented um, visuals, um, and then and then finally a kind of a, a sort of a. I'm going to describe it as sort of like a ghostly walk along a, a, a along a, a, a corridor in what feels like a block of flats, but it's it, but it's very dark. So you've got this kind of sense of like a, a hint of where you are. Um, and I hope it's not a spoiler alert to say the best neon animals then come flying at you down <laughs> down the corridor or, or gliding actually gently, sort of like a um, sort of like a um, like a carnival kind of mm. moment. Mm. Um, uh, so, so I hope that's not too much of a butchering of the the visuals and what you're doing. But um, yeah, what what were you trying to kind of so? And, and obviously, it's the, the key thing is that music is a real driver mm. for this this mm. piece. So, talk talk to me first a bit about the music and what you're trying to do, and then maybe how you're seeing the kind of the relationship between VR content and new music content as well. Mm. Uh, for the music, we've um, worked with. Uh, Sheffield musician um, 96 back uh, it was 
is the the, the sort of pseudonym of uh, Evan Evan Majumda Swift, and he's um, he's kind of grown up in Sheffield. He's in Manchester as well now, and he's really coming into his own at the moment. And he's associated with Hopeworks, which is a music venue here in Sheffield. Um, and this this project originally was, you know, it's a kind of a a project for them as well. Um, and they've been involved. And I I'd kind of envisage that the the club scene, if you like, at the at the start of the story, that's kind of where they are. Like possibly they're possibly at Hopeworks. Yeah. Um, so we we try to envisage that also bear in mind when we were creating this um for some time people hadn't been allowed to go to clubs you know it had been at a time so it was kind of you know a lot of people were saying well how how do you create a virtual club environment so it, that in itself was a challenge for us actually to to do that um and we'd, we'd wanted to really avoid having lots of bad 3d dancing figures you know <laughs> i'm grateful for that you didn't go down that road <laughs> no i've seen people that have and uh, spent a lot of money doing it and it looks awful so we <laughs> wanted to just give them all the the sort of almost like the aftertaste that you'd been in a club it's that kind of idea 